Man, it is so good to be here. If we have not met yet, my name is, is Joe Smith, and I'm our campus pastor here in Hollywood. And, and it's been a little bit of some crazy times recently. I've been traveling a lot, have a bunch of travel coming up as well. And, but I'm so excited even for this moment right now, the conversation that we get to have together. And, and I'm so excited about what I, I want to share with you because I feel like it's been so present. and powerful in my life. And, and, and recently, me and my wife, we, we went to Colombia. Anybody been to Colombia? Make some noise. All right, you just gotta dance when you say, Colombia. Eh? <laughs> like I came back and just like everywhere I'm at, I'm just like, ooh, I got a little more spice. And, and, and it was an amazing trip. And uh, I won't get into, maybe I'll, another time I'll tell you some of the incredible things that happened on this trip. But we were there celebrating uh, our friends who got married and, and it was so special. And, but it got started a little crazy. And, you know, first of all, like, we have four kids. If you didn't know that, you know, pray for us. Uh, <laughs> and my parents were going to watch our four kids while we were in Columbia for a week. And, and two days before we're leaving, my mom ends up in the ER. And thank God she's okay. And her health is, is so much better now. But it was a little scary there for a second. And so the, they couldn't watch our four kids. And so I'm talking to Beck and like, all right, maybe... Like, we should cancel, or maybe all stay home, you go. And I just, we can't leave our four kids to just anybody, right? That's like, that's inhumane. Huh? <laughs> but my wife was like, no, I, she's like dreaming, and like, she's on the beach in Colombia already, right? <laughs> so she rallies an army of like 17 girls who watch our kids for the next seven days while we're gone. And so it was crazy. But so we get to the airport, and I'm already stressed, being like, was this a bad idea? And I can't even take great care of them sometimes. Like, how am I gonna ask a stranger to? But we're there and we're like, okay, God, we, we trust you, we trust you. And so we get to the game, we're early and we, we arrive and we're just like waiting, right? For them to call out, all right, your flight is ready to board. And, and it's getting closer and closer and should be like boarding time. And we're like at the gate and there's like no movement. Looking at the screen, the, the screen doesn't say that, like, it's going to Columbia. And it's just so bizarre, you know? So I just had this one thought real quick, like, let's double check. We're at the right gates. And I look, and we're standing at gate 55, and, and our ticket says gate 155. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, the, the flight has been boarding already, and, and we just take off. And, of course... 155 is on the exact opposite side of the airport. And so we are sprinting. And so like we're sprinting so much. Every turn, we're like, oh, it's got to be there. And it's like, nope, we're still in the 60s. <laughs> My calves are burning. I'm running so fast. And like, I'm looking back, trying to be like, babe, like, are you there? And she'll turn a corner and they're like, okay, I take off. And, and we just book it. We, we run for probably 20 minutes all the way to the other side of the airport. And finally, we're there, and we're just in time to get on this flight to go to Columbia. And I was like, what a tragedy. If we, all this, line up these babysitters, right, all, and then we can't go because we're dumb. <laughs> I was like, how embarrassing would that have been? I'm like, how do, look it up, how do we do this, right? Like, and, and I wonder how many times in our lives, right, we find ourselves at a gate we didn't want to be at. We wonder how we got there. Or we wonder, like, God, how did you allow this? And God's like, well, when did you stop paying attention? <laughs> so I, I want to talk to you for a few minutes, and I want to ask you the simple question, are you paying attention? Because I don't know about you, but man, I, I desperately want to see God's movement and activity all around my life. How about you? See, I, I am consumed with the, the, the tragedy that there could be a moment in my life when, when God is trying to get my attention and I miss it, not because he didn't show up, but because I did not. So I want to ask you, are you paying attention? And in Acts chapter 3, there's this really beautiful story that I want us to read together, starting in verse 1. It says, one day, Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, 
where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Then he went with them to the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. So I love this passage of scripture here. It's one of my favorite stories in all the scriptures, and there's so many layers and textures to what is happening. And, and, and really, it's about this this moment, this essential moment, and not just the life of this beggar, but also in the life of Peter and John. That there was something that was different, and that this moment was bigger than other moments. And, and isn't that true about our lives, that not every moment carries the same weight? Now you realize that, right? There are some moments that are simply bigger than others. If you're married, right? Your anniversary, that day, you... You will remember that for as long as you live. Otherwise, you will not live very long. <laughs> right? The, the first time your team won a championship, you're going to remember that day. When your children are born, there's, there's certain moments that carry more weight than others. And, and I, and I want to talk to you for a few moments about how to not miss these moments. About how to, how to see them as divine. How to how to notice the movement, activity of God all around you in every aspect of your life. And the question is, are you paying attention? See, this passage begins in a familiar place. See, in verse 1, it says, One day Peter and John were going to the temple, the time of prayer, three in the afternoon. And then now a man was lame from birth, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. He was just like any other day. And the most transcendent moments in your life will always look like every other day. See, the, the moments that, that carry more weight than others, they're not going to look any different. The only difference is you. The difference is, do you see it? Are you aware of it? And, and it says he was put there every single day. And then verse 3, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. And so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. So that's just a side note real quick. We're always expecting something. But the question is, when you lead into that moment, what are you expecting from God? Are you expecting him to do what he's always done before? Or are you expecting him to do a new thing? And I think so often we miss what God's doing, not because he didn't move, but because we didn't notice his movement look different than how he's moved before. And how often do we look backwards and go, and go God, I want you to do that thing that you did before. And God's like, no, that's so boring. <laughs> right? The reason that God doesn't move like that is because, because that's not faith. Faith is always moving forward. Faith is always future-oriented. See, if you only see God in your past, you saw what God did, not what God is doing. And he's like, are you paying attention to what I'm saying to you, what I'm doing to you? And, and then Peter and John at this moment with this beggar and says, says, Peter looked straight at him and said, look at us. See, maybe you're here and God is having this conversation with you. He's saying, look at me. Stop getting distracted 
with everything around you. Stop letting other people steal your attention. Look at me. Because if you're going to capture all the moments that God has for you, then the first thing you have to do is you have to change what you're looking for. You got to change what you're looking for. You got to, you got to shift the filter a little bit. See, we have three boys in our house, Zai, who's seven, Indy, who's five, River, who's two, and, and it is pure chaos in the Smith house. And we're on like a Star Wars kick right now, and so pretty much every day is just a lightsaber fight and a force fight. So they fight with lightsabers, and they want to get me involved, and they'll be looking at me, and they'll go like, <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, I'm making breakfast, and they'll be like, <laughs> and then into your side, they'll be like, like throw me. I'm like, I can't, I'm holding eggs. And they'll be like, Dad, I gotta fly with the force. And whenever they're fighting, which is all the time, and we need to get their attention, it, it, it is virtually impossible. And I go, Zai, Indy River, come here. Silence, nothing. <laughs> River, Isaiah, Indy, I need you to come to daddy right now. Just still nothing. Full names, Isaiah Lucas Smith. Like I'm like, oh, I'm like my mom right now, all right? I say, get here, I need your attention. And, and I'll try to like, hey, you're the oldest, you're the leader of the family. Come here, and, oh, okay, dad. And I'll come over and and I'll try him trying to tell you something. Look at me. And, and he won't look at me. Right? He's distracted from the force. And, <laughs> and I'll like say, Zai, look at me. And, and then he'll like, look at me. I'm trying to make eye contact, right? Because you, you make eye contact. It's like you make soul contact. And, but the problem, you know, especially early on, is Zai has a lazy eye. <laughs> so I'll be like, look at me. And he's like, I am, daddy. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, but are you? Because I can't tell, but, but, but it's okay because I also have a lazy eye. And so he'll be like, Daddy, I am looking. I'll be like, ah, oh, oh, yeah, there you are. And our like lazy eyes meet each other. And we like, and we like have a moment, like me and him, right? Because because there, there's something about eye contact. There's something about when you, when you eliminate all the distractions, all the cell phones, all the alarms that go off at 12.02 every Sunday. You eliminate all of those distractions and you're just present and you're, you're making eye contact with God. When God's saying, look at me. I'm trying to get you to see something. I'm trying to teach you how to sense my presence all around. And when... And when Peter and John, see, they went by this gate every day. They saw this man every day. But there was something different about this moment when they just didn't walk past him. And I wonder for you, what, who are the people in your life that, that God has put them in your path and you walk past them on the way to see God do a thing and you didn't realize the thing God wants to do is right in front of you? See, be careful that you don't miss what God is doing on the way to see what God is doing. So I wonder how many times, right, we think I got to come to church or I got to go to that thing or I got to show up for fill in the blank. And, we, and we're so focused on where we think God is going to be that we don't realize that God is in every single moment of our life and we will take the time to notice him. So you got to change what you're looking for. You got to change what, what catches your eye. And ask yourself, are, are you more focused on seeing God in the spiritual things or the meaningful things? Because if you can notice God all around you, he'll bring meaning to everything you'll do, and you'll realize that everything you do is spiritual. And then in verse 6, it says, Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. We're going to get there in a second. 
But there's this really powerful thing about when we have these moments, when we allow God to move in our lives, it's because we choose to be present and engaged. That we're paying attention to everything he's doing around us. And, and my goodness, do we have an attention span crisis in our world right now. I mean, I can't keep up. It's like, it's like, it's Instagram. Just kidding, it's TikTok. No, just kidding, it's like TikTok talk. It's TikTok X, it's Apple Plus, it's Disney Plus, it's Plus Plus. Right, and it's crazy talking about attention span. In the last 15 years, our attention span has dwindled significantly. 15 years ago, the average attention span that you and I had was 12 seconds. First of all, it's crazy. Think about that. 12 seconds. See, 95% of you, you stopped listening, listening 12 seconds ago. You've already moved on. I'm like, I'm done with this dude. Like, hurry up. 12 seconds. In the last 15 years, it has shrunk from 12 seconds to 8.25 seconds. We, you know how crazy it is? How insane it is right now? We have a shorter attention span than goldfish. <laughs> goldfish attention span is nine seconds. If a goldfish was in this room, I promise you, they would receive all that I had for them. <laughs> They'll be listening. They'll be like, mm, that's good, bro. Keep it going. Our attention span has become shorter and shorter and shorter. See, we want the quick fix now. See, we, we want God to move and do his thing now. I'm like, God, I'm, I'm done waiting. If you don't show up now, I'm moving on. And do you know, how, you know how crazy it is that God takes the time to have a conversation with you and I? Do you know how much God has to slow himself down to get your attention? Do you know how fast he wants to move? Do you know that all the problems that we see in the world, all the crisis, all the human pain and struggle, do you know how quickly he wants to see a solution? Not fast, he wants to move. We are the ones that lose focus. And we move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, and God's like, you're not going to have what you need for the next thing if you don't receive what I have for you right now. Are you paying attention? Are you noticing all that God's doing and And you have to change what you're looking for. But you also, if you want to capture every moment that's in front of you, you, you have to find something to give. You've got to dig deep. And when the moment presents itself, you, you've got to not focus on what you don't have, but what you do have. See, Peter, when he looks at this man, this man asks him for money. He says, silver or gold, I do not have. And I think so many of us stop right there. We say, I don't have what it takes. I don't have what you're looking for. Sorry, we put a period there when God wanted to put a comma. And Peter says, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. See, the world does not need what you don't have. They need you to bring to the forefront what God already put inside of you. See, there are moments in your life and my life when we do not need any more information, we do not need any more revelation, we don't need any more talent, we don't need any more gifting, what we need is simply to bring what God already put inside of us. See, there are people in your life right now. I'm telling you, there are people in your life right now that what they want from you is the hope God put inside of you. I'm telling you right now, there are people in your life drowning in despair drowning in loneliness, drowning in isolation. And they don't need anything else out there. They just need you to show up. See, the world needs us to step up and show up when there's a shooting of massive proportion. Our response must be more courage. It must be more anger that we're better than this. It must drive us mad that someone would not know how loved they are 
that someone would not know how much they matter to God and that they would choose to destroy when everything God does is build. But that will not be the last story. So it should fuel us. It should drive us. It should drive us mad. It should remind us that, that we're, we're missing something. We're missing our humanity. We're missing what God longed for. And, and it's like, are we paying attention to all the things that God's doing? See, and there are so many moments in my life that I've missed. How about you? Like, I, even preparing for today, I, I was just inundated with all these moments that I know, I know that God brought me to, and, and I missed it. Like, I remember this one moment, somebody, a friend I'd been praying for, and, and I felt like God had put on my heart, and, and I was in a city to connect with him and some other people in his organization, and, and he didn't show up to that. And, and it was a little bit of tension in the relationship. And, and a part of me was like, I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. And I don't know if I was ready to deal with it. And then in the, the lobby, I'm walking. And I cornered my eye. I look and I see him. And, and I just kept walking. And I kept walking. And, and then found something inside him. I was like, oh, what are you doing? Turn around. I turned around. I went to find him. And he was gone. And that was the last time that I've seen him in probably the last six years. And that moment haunts me because I know I missed it. That moment haunts me because I know that God had something for him. And, and just, I know there's moments that I've missed and, and I've blown it. And see, I want that to be the fuel that, that I don't miss the next moment that God has for me. Because I maybe cannot change that moment, but I can be present for the next one. Silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give you. There's something inside of you that God gave you. There's, there's something inside of you that, that was yours and yours alone. Something inside of you that when you place it in the hands of God and, and when you bring it to the forefront, you elevate in these moments when it's not just about what God wants to do, in you, but it's also about what God wants to do through you. And then after Peter and John have this moment, he says, silver gold I do not have. In verse 7, it says, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. They recognized him as the same man. See, when God transforms your life from the inside out, you're supposed to look the same but different. Man, I'm so glad that, that I'm same but different. How about you? That there's... If you're gonna clap, clap. Come on now, yeah. See, the beauty of how God works is that he did, does not want to change the essence of who you are because that's why he made you. So he takes the same and then he adds a little bit of, of him and, and it's that different where people go, I recognize you, but there's a shift. So they recognize him as the same man that they put in front of the gate every single day. But this time he wasn't laying. This time he was jumping up and down. And they said, I recognize that. They were aware of God's movement and his activity. And, and Peter and John realized that, that they were there not for them, but what, for what they could do for this man. A few years ago, uh, we were on a baby moon for one of our kids. And baby moon was just a great invention, whoever thought of it. It's before you have your baby, go chill on a beach somewhere. I'm like, sign me up. So we go, and, and if I can be just... Fully transparent, I, I had a conversation with God in my like, spirit before. I said, God, look, I, 
I'm pastor. I'm, I, I say, yes, I'm in. I love Mosaic. I love my city. I'm, whatever you need, God, I'm all in. But, but can I, like, just have, like, a vacation, just me? Because I, like, I was like, God, I know what you do. Every time we go somewhere around the world, you always, there's some encounter we have. We're literally in Colombia, and we walk into a coffee shop, and we're going upstairs, upstairs, and somebody goes, Joe? Joe Smith? I wanted to just keep walking. No, vacation, you know? <laughs> and it comes out, it's f- friends of ours that we don't know very well, but we know of them in, Me- in Mosaic, Mexico, who, by the way, today is celebrating their four-year anniversary. It's amazing. <laughs> so excited for them. So I'm like, God, I know what to do. You're always, like, connect us with somebody, and then the vac- it's not a vacation anymore, and now we got to invest in people. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I was like, I don't want, I just want to, like, I want, like, buy the pool, Mai Tai, you know, some virgin, some not, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I just want infinity, I want to relax. And so we're there, and it's amazing. The resort is beautiful, it's stunning, right? We're having the time of our lives, and, and it's like the second to last day, and, and I get in the pool, and it's an infinity pool, we're seeing the ocean, I'm like, oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I just, I, I hear this thick Aussie accent. And I was like, mm-mm, no, God. <laughs> It's like, mm, I know what you're doing, you know? And I just hear that accent's getting closer and closer. I was like, no, I just want to chill. Closer and closer. And I was like, ah, I know. I know what I got to do. So I do what any husband does. You, I went and got my wife. I said, babe, come. And my wife is from New Zealand, but also lived in Australia. And so I said, there's Aussies in the pool. <laughs> and we've been married long enough. She knows that means, OK, it's time to get to work. Comes over. And, we start talking to these two friends and find out that they are from the same city from where Beck lived when she was in Australia and then come to find out the reason, or they're, they're there in Mexico, but they almost canceled because if you remember, there was a flight, Malaysia Airlines, that was flying over the Ukraine that was tragically shot down. And all 200 plus people were killed. And these two friends, their parents, were supposed to be on that flight. But they missed the flight in the morning and they didn't get on. It's the only reason they're alive. And they were just shook. And we're in the pool. And we're just having a conversation about life. And then they ask what we do. And, and then like, we tell them we're pastors of Part Church Mosaic. And then they just start drifting away. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see in their essence, they were like, oh, didn't know we we're going to go there. <laughs> but we just started talking about their story and our story and the pool turned to the restaurant and the restaurant turned into the lobby and the next you know, our vacation was over. <laughs> but the last day before we left, they, they're like, hey, we're in LA for like 12 hours before we fly out. Can you tell us all the best restaurants and coffee shops we should go to? We're like, absolutely. Just tell us, what's, what's like the Airbnb you're staying at? What's the address? And they said, address is 7110 Hollywood Boulevard. And if, if you don't know why everybody's laughing, let me, let me tell you why. Um, Mosaic's address is 7107 Boulevard, Hollywood Boulevard. And the Airbnb they're staying at is that massive complex that's on our parking lot. And the balcony that they go out and they were standing on, you just see Mosaic. <laughs> you, you ever, like, had friends where you're trying to help them see the, like, evidence of God all around them and, and see God's movement? And it was, like, really hard and difficult. Right? This was not one of them. <laughs> Just like, okay, I think, I think God's trying to tell you something. <laughs> but, and we've gotten to become friends with them, and we connect online, and, and it's just been beautiful to come I, What a tragedy if I cared more about myself in that moment. I just kept drifting. It would have been as if they would have went through their whole life thinking, God, why don't you see me? And I think so many times there's people that wonder how come God never showed up. And it's not that God didn't, it's that we didn't. But, but what I want to talk to you for a second before I close is, is this really important thing, right? See, that one was kind of easy. I, I had to step up and be engaged and Beck had to do her thing. And, but it was so obvious that God was moving. See, I think a lot of us, when we're engaging with God, is we're trying to figure out how we can see the face of God. And and that part's kind of easy, those obvious moments where it's like, oh, God's getting my attention. See, but I don't want to teach you how to see the face of God. See, I want to teach you how to see the fingerprints of God. So here's the difference. 
See, it's subtle. See, if you can train your spirit, if you can decide and make this shift ahead of time, it will be insane how much you see and hear and feel God all around you. It'll be as if every moment of your life that is transcendent, every moment of your life that is life altering, it'll be these moments that, that seem so innocuous, but you have trained your spirit to see nothing as an accident, but you see the fingerprints of God all around you. See, when Peter and John, when they walk to the temple, when they go on their way to pray, it could have been like every other moment when they showed up at this temple, but something was different inside of them because I think something shifted. Where they said, God, I want to I wanna see you in everything. And maybe you're here right now and and that's been your prayer. God, I just want to see you. I want to sense you. I want to be able to close my eyes. And, and as real as the wind across my cheek and as real as the sunshine on the back of my neck, as real as the oxygen filling my lungs, God, I want to sense your spirit. I want to sense your presence. I want to see your fingerprints all around because here's the reality. When, when you see the fingerprints of God, you realize that you're looking in the face of God. I wonder for you today, I wonder if this is the choice that you need to make with your life where you finally you finally see all the activity that God has been wooing you with his love. You finally see that everything good in your life comes from him and he's led you to this moment right now. Because not all moments carry the same weight. The question is, are you paying attention? We can all bow our, our heads and close our eyes here together. If there's anyone out here Right now, you sense as clear as day that God's trying to bring you into life with him, that God's telling you he loves you with a perfect love. He's telling you that there's nothing that matters more to him than you. That maybe you walked into this room filled with despair, and filled with worry and anxiety, and depression, hopelessness and fear. but you want to leave this room with something different. And you want to leave with his hope and his mercy and his kindness and his joy and his wonder and his life. If that's you and, and you feel like every moment of your life has led you to this one where you, you feel like God's saying, look at me. God's saying, I want you to know how much I love you and I will do it all over and over and over again for you. And maybe you're here and, and this is your moment. And you let his voice swallow up all the others and you hear him say, I'm here and I'm ready for you. If that's you and you're ready to trust Jesus with your life, then what I want you to do first is pray this simple prayer. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. And it's with those words, you put your life in his hands and then in return, he gives you his life. And it's full of forgiveness. It's full of beauty. It's full of life. Jesus, I, I give you my life. That's you, and you prayed that prayer. What I want you to do as quickly as you can, do not overthink it. Realize the moment is now. I want you to raise your hand so I can see you and I can pray for you. Beautiful. Come on, raise it high. I want to see you. Beautiful. I want you to know that God sees you. And in fact, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to know God's saying, I see you. I see you. I see you. Anyone else? 
Not every moment carries the same weight. Do not miss your moment. Beautiful, I see you. Father, I pray for every hand held high. I pray for the person who just raised two hands. I pray you would wrap them in your love, Jesus. I pray that they would know there's no choice that could keep them from your love. I pray that, that they would be the same but different. And that when they walk out of these doors, a light would be turned on that could bring so much wonder to every room that they step into. Jesus, we thank you so much. We love you. We ask that you would help us see the evidence of you all around us. We thank you. We ask all this in your name. Amen and amen. Hey, Mosaic, can we thank God for everyone who made a choice today? Beautiful. Before we leave, I have one last thing because I think this is really important and I wanted us to leave with this. In verse 11, this is after. This man is healed in an instant that it says his feet and his ankles became strong. It says, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished as the man held on to Peter and John. See, God can change your life in an instant. For some of you that made a choice today, that's what happened. You stepped into life and it was instant. But here's what I want you to hear. See, change can happen in an instant, but growth happens over a lifetime. See, God can could absolutely transform you and, and bring you to life. But, but when this man, his, his feet were healed and he jumped up and it was as if he was a complete new man. But I love in verse 11, he wasn't strong enough yet to do it on his own. It says he held on to Peter and John. See, some of you have been trying to live life all by yourself. God changed you, he transformed you, but you don't realize that will give you the strength to walk, not walk, will give you the strength to run. Marathons will be community, not isolation. And as Martwan said earlier today, we're starting a Bible study tomorrow. We're doing three weeks and, and really this is about holding on to somebody. It's about letting the communal strength develop the resilience and the endurance so that when you need to be there for someone else, you're ready to elevate. Because you have to ask yourself, are you paying attention? That God is moving, that God is elevating, that God is active. And here's what I know, that God does not wanna always be your rescue. Sometimes he wants you to be the redeemer. So are you paying attention to not just what God wants to do in your life, but are you paying attention to the people that have been waiting for you to bring your best self? Do not ask God for give, to give you anything else. You have all that you need. The question is, will you have the courage to do it? Love you guys.